cabin fever. It's one of those movies that uses the excuse of trying to be like an older horror movie just so it can give you crappy characters. And where you think the bare essence of a plot should be, there's a bunch of blood and gore. And in fact, that's pretty much this whole movie. I pretty much summed it up right there. I could probably end this right now, but where's the torture in that? You guys see what I did there? It was the exact same thing I said to open my original Cabin Fever review, but I said it more serious slash angry, I guess. When it was announced they were remaking Eli Ross' OG masterpiece Cabin Fever, there was a giant collective, why? But after having seen it, I can say that this movie is a reason to exist. And that, of course, being to redefine the meaning of pointless. I actually started breaking down laughing during parts of watching this remake just due to how pointless it was. And I believe most of you know the original Cabin Fever isn't something I sit around watching a lot, but even still, I could remember just about every beat that was going to happen in this film. Now my hero, Eli Roth, didn't direct the second coming of Stupid Here. Instead, that honor was given to Travis Ball Z. But this remake uses the original script, so there's very little in variation and hardly anything new being brought to the table with this. The first Cabin Fever was a 2002 movie, and there's nothing mind-blowingly new they could accomplish by giving it a remake just 14 years later. So, what exactly is supposed to be the appeal of this? Alright, now take for example, the Psycho remake. That was a pile of crap too, of course, but I at least get why they wanted to do that one. There had been significant upgrades in film technology since the original had been made. The main problem with that one, of course, being though that you were just looking at an inferior copy of a good movie. But here, nope. Cabin Fever can't claim that, so here it's just like you're watching alternate bland universe Cabin Fever where all the actors have been replaced by CW looking ass wipes. Or I could see any of these guys being popular on YouTube for no other reason than their stupid face. I was constantly forgetting which one was supposed to be the Ryder Strong character, Paul. And as for Paul, he's an average guy. Yeah. Just an average guy. And just by the way, I had to look that name up while writing this because despite watching two versions of this same damn movie, I still couldn't give a crap about any of these shitty characters' names. Now, if we want to get a little deeper into why Eli Ooh faced Roth let this remake happen, well, just think for a second about what tends to occur when a crappy horror remake gets put out. People usually say the original was better. This really does seem like the most likely case for why Eli Roth wanted a crap remake of his movie to happen. So people would look back more favorably on his original Cabin Fever. So, did it work? Yup, I absolutely now love the original pointless Cabin Fever with all its obnoxious jackass characters outfaced. This remake really is confused a lot of the time as well, because for the majority, it's a more straight-laced take on Cabin Fever. So, instead of obnoxious jackasses, we get bland jackasses. They are still miserable, unlikable asshats, it's just they don't go over the top as much here as they did originally. However, then the remake tries to add what passes for comedy around here in places where it wasn't before. Like the forest hermit's blood-exploding dog now being named Pancakes. Pancakes! And that's a joke that only plays to you if you've seen the original, stupid. But if you've seen that, you've already seen this movie, so what are we doing here? Hey, maybe someone will succumb to the actual symptom of cabin fever in the remake. <laughs> Good one. You just use that shin of yours to call me and I'll come a-running. It's just peace and relaxation the entire time. And beer. Don't forget about the beer. See, Jackass 1 still wants to drink, but he's a more serious drinker now.
Dickie Prairie Store! <laughs> oh, if the moment with the rabbit performing pancake surgery on Pancake Kid was too subtle for you before, now he just wears a paper plate rabbit mask because that's creepy, I guess. Creepy. See? And we all know rabbits equal pancakes. Replacement Meat's world gets bitten just like his forefather did, but they dial it up to stupid and actually have him draw blood, which didn't seem to be the case in the original. The storekeeper this time seems to be off-brand Silas Weir Mitchell. I kinda wish it was him. At the same time, I don't. Damn it! God damn it, what did I tell you about Button City folk? Hey, it's not his fault. Take it easy on him. It's not his fault. Fault? I'm pretty sure it is. He had to bite you really hard to draw blood like that. Why are you defending this? Take it easy. Don't you tell me how to raise my boy? See, it's like what happened before, but everyone is angrier. Certain bits are cut from this one, so no hilarity of racist Santa Claus, but we still get jackass one trying to steal a Snickers bar, but... It's angrier this time. Mm. You want to give me one Whoa. good reason why you'd steal a Snickers bar? Would you believe me if I told you it was for the nougat? I didn't know how complex this scene could be if they were more upset about Snickers. Snicker Cruncher! Hungry? Crunch this! If you're looking for fun, You've come to the wrong place. Tagline of the movie! And the original. I'm not getting any bars. Um, so no phone, and I'm guessing no internet. No internet? No GTA 5, no Black Ops 2, no Stampy, no Minecraft. Whoa, I was wrong. They did update this movie. Now there's a mention of Minecraft. That's what was missing. Will you be careful with that thing? Do you relax, man? It's just a fucking BB gun. You brought a gun. It's a rifle. More specifically, an assault rifle. Ooh, improved! I guess. He doesn't talk about squirrels being gay like in the OG stupid, but instead of just having the gun accidentally go off in the trees, Jackass 1 almost blows Bland Meat's world away. Just keep that thing away from me. That's a very understated reaction for what just happened there. That's how their bland universe is, I suppose. What happened? No signal. I can still post stuff. Kill upload, I'll just take longer. Okay, no movie. You can't have this both ways. Either their phones have some signal or they don't. If they even have a slow connection to the internet, they'd still be able to get a text-based message through, and a lot quicker than her stupid slow picture uploads. So, you've effectively screwed up part of this movie's plot, because they're supposed to be stuck out here without any way to contact anyone. I find it strange, find it strange that you wander in this place. I don't wanna wait. For our lives to be over Because I want them dead right now Here's Eli Ross' dream come to life though He wanted more ass in this scene originally And fought with the actress where the bed sheets would be taped to her ass But no tape here, full ass Ooh, ass, ass moated It's a good remake of me saying that This family friend I've had for 12 years Just put his hands on my face and tongue down my throat and it was, it was gross, it was just bad. This family friend puts his hands on my face, full on tongue, God, it was so gross. Isn't it great to hear these stupid words again? And from the sounds of the story, she kind of got molested a bit by some weird old pervert and isn't that bothered. The only reason this stupid story is here is so douche meets world can be like, does that mean I have an opening? Then it's time for the jackass shooting the hermit scene, just with a slightly different flavor of stupid. What did you do me? You shot me! This time, though, he tries using that slow internet connection to get help for the guy. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, he's still a jackass. You burn the whole fucking place down? What are you, fucking Smokey the Clown now? What, are you trying to burn the whole place down? What's wrong with you? 
What are you, smoking the clown? It really is nice that 14 years later, people got to re-experience such highs as the Smokey the Clown joke. Was that a mistake anyone actually ever made? Time for that story about murders at a bowling alley. If you loved how little point it had the first time, you'll really love this movie's even blander take on it without even providing the fun time story visuals. Yeah, so thanks for the waste of time. Inside the larger waste of time. Then it's time for not Eli Roth and Dr. Dog to show up. Would have been a kind of funny in-joke if this guy was at least played by Travis Ball Z, but nope. His name's Dr. Mambo. Psychiatrist or pediatrician? A little of both, I guess. What? No oo-faced? Am I upset about that? As stupid as Ooh Faced was, it was at least something people remembered about this damn movie. Ooh Faced! Just grim, like death. I figure I'm gonna die up in these mountains anyway, so... I don't know. I always thought the magical weed-bearing weirdo from the woods with a dog doctor character lent himself to being taken more seriously. It's really odd the tone this remake gives to some of these characters as well. It tries to make them all seem ominous, like they're in league with the flesh-eating virus. Ugh, leather virus is the worst slasher killer ever. Then the hermit shows up looking for help in all the wrong places again. We need to call him a doctor. Call someone. Okay, no, 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 we don't have any reception. I can still post stuff. I'll upload, I'll just take longer. <laughs> The Hermit gets in their vehicle, and they impair their only way out of here, like the geniuses at work they are. This time, though, they apparently just didn't leave the keys in the ignition like the original, so score one for the Blandies. Help me. Look, what were we gonna do? Setting him on fire was the most humane thing to possibly do. Hey, what well, do you know, that's still stupid. Holy shit. Six years later. You know, I'm biased since I made it, but I enjoyed the Dingo Pictures remake better. Where are you, Where are you going? going? To get help! I, I need, need help. help! This movie does a shot where they show the water supply to the cabin is coming from the lake so you know that it's infected when Dick Meets World gives a glass of it to Blondie. Though, in the remake, you just have to assume it's bad because they don't show you anything in the water like the hermit's body was in the original. And the reason they screw this up is just so that they can do a stupid twist jump scare with this guy later in the film. Really changing things up, whoa! More old ladies beating up dead pigs, but with more blood this time. Cabin fever sure does just like having random crap in it for the sake of stuff in whichever version you watch. But, oh man, bloody glasses this time! <laughs> See, overall more of a serious tone, but then they've got extra stupid gags like this added. What is this movie trying to be? And speaking of this thing's confused tone, here's a scene that exemplifies this. The party cop scene, which by the way, is a female now. Finally, gender equality for the role of party cop. It's what women always wanted. I really don't understand anything about this character here. And yeah, it was a terrible character in the original who was a one-note party joke, but didn't feel at odds with itself like here. I also don't get why she's all super glamoured up. She's supposed to be from a local backwoods sheriff's department. But look! They gave her a scar! That sure is... something they added for some more stuff. I wouldn't let him ruin the fun. She was sent here by the virus! That still doesn't make sense! Bad movie, bad! It looks like you guys were having some kind of party last night. I'll bet you like to party. 
I bet you like to party with the ladies. Wow, a more serious tone with these really stupid party lines. But at least Party Cop now also wants to screw Dumb Meats World. Really added some extra layers there. We just have to make sure the dimensional barrier stays strong because should it fail and these Party Cops meet? I want you to know you're my top priority. Because you're my party man, Mrs. Party Town. We are going to party, right? Ominous party! Seriously, I don't know what this scene is trying to be. It's got the majority of the same goofy dialogue from the original, but it's acting like this is serious business. It's so awkward. It's like watching people trying to perform a scene after they had just watched some other people just do it, and they're trying so hard to do it differently, it just ends up stiff and unnatural. Well, she's a head case anyway. All chicks are. Hell is other people. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? You're not the only gamer here. Gaming is the same thing as real life. I also like that they were impressed with her shooting nothing there. How'd you manage to hit the ground? Wow. They never show not Eli Roth dead in this one, by the way. You just have to assume Dr. Dog got him, I guess. Which, just like the first time, I don't get why the virus makes everyone else weak and die, including the dog at the beginning, but it turns this one dog into the Terminator. Same old shit, same old shit. Blondie is infected with the T-virus. Everyone strips down to make sure there's nothing on them because everyone else in this group is just fine, right? It's not like Fiddlesticks Meets World just came out of that room with his hand covered in infected blood or anything. But now, victory is finally Veronica's as she gets to lock Betty up in the shed so Archie Meets World will be all hers. What a prize. Can't wait for Douchehead to go get turned into a pancake burger. Again a bunch of running around looking for help. This would be really silly if they had a slow internet connection at the cabin. Isn't it great how stupid these characters are in both versions of this? They lock Blondie up in the shed because they're so terrified she's going to infect them, but when it comes time to try and get her into a vehicle, they grab her without care and her blood-soaked blanket, gloves, some sort of masks. Nah, she was in the shed overnight, so now they're safe from the virus. Jackass 2 acts like a jackass and leaves. If you've seen this scene in the original, you've seen it here already. Pretty disappointed here, though, that after Veronica and Blandrews meet, Meets worlds have their why not sex, he neglects to pour Listerine on his dick. This could have saved him, so he could have gotten up to be exploded by a bus in the bland remake of Cabin Fever 2. This place also is very localized rain, apparently, as it's all overcast and raining during the plane crash sex, but it's clear and sunny for both Jackass 2 and over at the pancake store. Don't come any closer. I'll call you doctor. Pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. He said it, and now I'm gonna go on about Samurai Pizza Cats. What was that in my original review? Did that relate to the pancake scene or something? Why did I do that? Must be on drugs. Nice callback. Well, the stupidity of the pancakes bite scene was a lot quicker this time. It has no pointless kung fu, so that's a plus. Get my boss sick is the same as killing him, it's murder! Ben's there! Get me the gun! But, you know, with a flesh-eating virus going around and all your friends are currently dying or running around like idiots, it's a really good time for personal grooming. The remake takes us to the next level of stupidity here, though, and has a nipple fall off. Was she shaving her boobs, too? This is not epic or really meaningful. Shut up, movie. Dr. Mambo finally gets to make a house call, and apparently World Meets Crap is the slowest shitter ever, as there's still quite a bit of light in the sky when Bland Ronica got killed, but it's pitch black by the time he gets over there to find out that she's been turned into Nickelodeon slime. <laughs> 
What are you shooting at the dog for? It's only trying to tuck Blondie in from the lux of this. But Doofus Meese World apparently shot the dog to the next dimension. Because it just disappears after its off-screen death. Well, Blondie is doing a lot better at this point than she was in the original. But hey, let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> the colossal, horrible human being douchebag meets world then hesitates after shoveling her in the face once. You don't commit to putting your friend out of their misery, then stop partway through. That's worse. But this shit for brains takes her misery to the next level by deciding to burn her alive! Gas in her open wounds? That must feel great! Man, this guy is smart! But oh well, we all know human beings are made of flash paper, so she's just gonna go poof, right? <laughs> That was the most humane way to possibly do that. Her screams mean she no longer feels pain. <laughs> he then shoots up the pancake store gang after they killed Lughead. Good thing you didn't like them like Blondie or they would have had to suffer more before death. Party Cop is again in the woods partying, though since they didn't play her as quite the comedic dummy as the original, it just feels bizarre that this is going on. Some kids are up in the cabin apparently on some type of killing spree. Two, possibly three casualties. They're armed and extremely dangerous. How do they know anyone's been killed at this point? The police haven't gone to the cabin yet. If you see the kids, shoot them on sight. So Party Cop has absolutely no reason not to shoot him here, but she doesn't. And this scene plays out a little differently. I guess he's not allowed to hit female Party Cop with a bat like he did before, so instead she directs him to the woods to a supposed road. There's no fucking road out here! But she lied, and he died. So, she could have just shot him. Jackass 2 made it! LOL, no he didn't. Wait, they put the goop that comprised the rest of Bland Ronica into a body bag? Also, Pancakes was behind the whole thing! Or something, it doesn't make sense anyway, who cares? But before the movie is truly over, it's time for the dumbest twist of all. Blondie's slow upload pictures have made it onto Facebook, and her phone was apparently floating around taking pictures while she was dying because she sure as shit didn't take those. But that sure was worth the added plot hole of them having the internet, wasn't it? It's slow, droney, and infuriating watching Cabin Fever's crap plot and dialogue get repeated almost beat for beat with very little actual story deviation. Watching this movie is kind of like watching a foreign language remake of a movie, but whereas a remake like that opens up the movie to another audience, this was just for the same audience. You can tell they tried to give this remake a kind of different feel, but it just comes off confused, especially when it's using the same script full of stupidity and trying to play it more straight. I hated hearing this dialogue in the remake just like I hated hearing it in the original stupid movie. But the original was at least a stupid movie that had an identity of some sort. However, making a crappy clone of it doesn't somehow make the 2002 crap and fever any better. Oof. Faced. The best thing I can really say about this remake is it took out some of the douche bro -y lines like the kind of homophobic calling things gay slang. But that's hardly a reason for this dumb movie to now exist twice. I'd much rather have seen the follow-up to Sean Astin's magically appearing after you drink it blood that they were making before they scrapped it to make the first movie again. It was a dumb movie the first time, and what do you know, it was a dumb movie the second time. And now, because the movie's infected me, I guess, I'm gonna throw up some blood. Not on my camera, though. What am I, an idiot? Boy. Am I ever getting sick of this? I'm in good with the virus! <laughs> So